Spinosaurids are frustrating, in large part because they kind of just show up out of nowhere. The earliest known truly definitive Spinosaurid is Baryonyx, and while mostly complete, it's also very, very clearly a Spinosaurid. It already had enlarged hand claws and already had an elongated snout. It's a Spinosaurid very clearly. It's not really that useful for understanding their early evolution. And this new fossil might actually indicate at least something about where they came from, but it's still not super helpful. And that's because, well, things like Baryonyx came from the early Cretaceous, this fossil actually comes from the middle Jurassic of India. Now for comparison, while I did mention Baryonyx, there is one tooth from the Tendikaru beds of the late Jurassic of Tanzania that may also be Spinosaurid in nature. Unfortunately, that's just a tooth, so we don't know for sure. This fossil similarly is just one piece of it, and in this case, it's actually just one claw bone from the foot, which isn't exactly hugely influential in understanding it, and there can be a lot of variation in these in different dinosaur groups. In fact, they compare it to a bunch of different dinosaur groups. And you can see those all laid out here with the very first ones being this new fossil coming from India and many of the other ones bearing at least some resemblance to it. For example, in this image under F is Afrovenator, which while it's still under debate, isn't a Spinosaurid. K, representing a toe claw which is almost as flat, is Tyrannosaurus rex. And in fact, some of the most flat ones towards the bottom of this figure are from herbivores like Rabidodon in the I section. Now, it's not just the flatness that matters in Spinosaurids, and even Hone and Holtz in 2021 pointed out that while sure they generally trend more flat, it's not a hard, fast rule that Spinosaurids had flat toe bones, so it's hard to say for sure. However, when they also looked at the length of the toe bone with its associated flatness, it did plot pretty closely to things like Spinosaurus, which is really promising and may be indicative that, yeah, this could be a very early Spinosaurid toe bone. With all that said though, I have heard secondhand from some researchers that looked at the paper but not the bone itself, that it does seem very Spinosaurid-like. So potentially it is still an early Spinosaurid, it's just going to take a little bit more of a better fossil to understand that. Because like I said earlier, Spinosaurids are frustrating. And the Spinosaurids aren't even the whole problem. The group that they likely evolved from, the Megalosaurs, are also really poorly understood. There were talks at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology meeting this past October that actually talked about that. I went, hey, some of these aren't actually species, or at least not confidently enough species to say they're their own species. They might be, but we just don't have enough of them to know for sure. And if we don't even know the hypothetical parent group of the Spinosaurids, how can we really expect to know the Spinosaurs that well either? It's, again, frustrating, and hopefully we'll get some wonderful fossils in the future that are really, really complete and show all of the anatomical details we need to understand how they evolved. But for right now, that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. We're just going to end up a bit frustrated with how evolution actually takes place and how often the fossil record just doesn't preserve things that we'd really like to have.